Hello and welcome. It's time to take a look ahead at what could drive the markets this week. I'm Kelly O'Byrne and I'm a dealer here on LCG's Trading Desk. Well, we are in the thick of corporate earnings season. It's the second quarter results in the US and plenty of half-year updates coming through in Europe and the UK. The overall tone of these results will help determine whether the current bull run in equities gets another leg higher. Some earnings highlights for next week include HSBC on Monday, Apple BP and British gas owner Centrica on Tuesday, Rio Tinto, Stan Chart and William Hill on Wednesday, Adidas and BMW on Thursday and finally RBS on Friday. And all of these are available to trade on the LCG platform. There's also plenty of economic data to sink your teeth into if you are trading the Forex market. The RBA rate decision comes after a big breakout in the Aussie dollar. However, weaker than expected inflation last week has tempered some bullish bets. Euro dollar broke above 117 to hit a two and a half year high last week. So Eurozone CPI on Monday, as well as second quarter GDP on Tuesday will be key. It's also, of course, the Bank of England's turn to set interest rates in the aftermath of a modest bounce back in UK GDP last week. Also on tap, we have PMIs from Europe, the UK, the US and China, which could have a bearing on the two year high in copper. Now, I'm joined by our head of research, Jasper Lawler. Jasper, very welcome back to you. So um, back to earnings season, uh, how do you see things going and how important is it for the health of the stock market? Thanks, Kelly. I'm glad to be back. Um, at the moment, it's, it's paramount. I mean, I think that's really the key force in the equity markets is that earnings season is going so well. Um, in the US and, to the, and in the UK and Europe, to some extent, it's, it's largely the bounce back in the energy sector. Um, you know, we had results from uh, from Shell last week, and by one measure, profits were up 245 percent. So um, that that large weighting of energy is really helping. Um, but we're seeing it, you know, kind of across the board. Uh, technology, uh, you know, huge results from Facebook again. Um, you know, all of this is a, just a positive impetus onto the, the stock market. But is that the be all and end all of, of why we're moving higher in stock markets? No, no, obviously every week pretty much we talk about the fact that it's very easy central bank conditions and really that is behind the bull market. Um, that will probably be what ends it. But at the moment, I think we're getting another little push, um, particularly in the US stock markets, thanks to the strong earnings. And then from what I've seen so far in the UK, if we see a continuation of it, I think we can actually see the, uh, the FTSE catch up as well. And a few economic data points this week, and we had the Fed, Fed decision last week, of course. Um, where do you see the FX uh, markets moving? Well, you're right to say that it's probably going to be all in the context of last week's Fed meeting. Um, but I think we do have to switch gears to the other central banks. So the RBA up first, but then the Bank of England. Um, for the RBA, we hit the, the 80 level um, in the Aussie against the dollar. That's a big round number, probably profit taking taking place there. We also had Governor Stevens saying a softer Aussie dollar would be better. Uh, and obviously that inflation data that you mentioned, yeah. all kind of weighing on it a bit, but not much. And to me, the Aussie dollar's broken out. Um, so of course we can have some correction in the meantime, but to me, whatever results from this meeting, I think it's going to be colored by a general trend now that we're seeing in reaction to central bank meetings where actually investors are not really taking what they're saying at face value. And so even if they try and talk down the Aussie again, which inevitably they'll do, I still think the Aussie's got, uh, got some legs here. And again, similar idea with the Bank of England. I don't, th I mean, I think they're going to do their best to you know, talk down the pound and, and suggest that there won't be any rate rises on the cards. That's certainly Mark Carney's view. Um, I suspect that the, um, the, the voting will be still configured sort of five to three in favor of the doves. Um, but nonetheless, the Brexit political situation is not looking as dire as it could be. Um, politics in, in Europe in general is improving. And on the flip side, it looks like the Fed probably aren't going to raise rates in September based on last week's meeting. So all of that, to me, is contributing towards um, the pound steadily moving beyond that 130 level. Um, slightly different against the, the euro, um, but I think still uh, the pound in general um, 
can weather this this Bank of England meeting. Okay, so you've mentioned central banks. What about the big day on Friday? Of course, we can't forget the non-farm payrolls. And I should mention, actually, that um, we've got a special live non-farm payrolls webinar taking place then with yours truly. Um, so please attend that if you can. Uh, it's going to be the sort of 10 minutes before and after um, the, the, the main event. So that's 1.30 p.m. London time. Um, and so, you know, the obviously, again, that's in the context of the Fed meeting. Um, I think probably it's going to have to be a very dramatic number, uh, a very dramatically positive number to bring on a September rate hike and a dramatically negative number um, to, to mean that people still don't think there'll be any more rate hikes this year or maybe they even delay the, the, the shrinking of the balance sheet. So in a sense, it's going to probably be a short-term phenomenon. Um, what's bad, what's really bad, probably below 100K, what's, you know, what's really good, above 300k pretty much and i think that's been a pretty consistent benchmark for the last couple of years yeah and quickly before we go what's catching your eye in commodities uh, well obviously oil has just bounced back massively that 45 level in brent um, pretty much called the bottom spot on we had a few jokes back and forth about whether it like, could potentially be the bottom crystal balls etc um, it was and we've really moved higher pretty much ever since um, you know i think the oil market's in a kind of range now. It's a, got a slight negative bent, um, but I think probably during the summer months, um, U.S. driving season, um, interventions from OPEC verbally more than actually doing anything will be enough probably to keep us keep us higher and prevent any kind of major sell-off in oil. I'm still slightly dubious on it. I think there might be a chance to to sell this bounce coming up fairly soon. And in gold, it's that 1260 pivot level again that seems to have kind of sent the, the price lower. Um, but if the dollar kind of keeps weakening, you know, September doesn't look like such a, an option, that will be positive for gold. The only tricky thing with, with gold really is, both relating to the Fed, is that you, on the one hand, you've got them seeming, seemingly more hesitant on the rate hikes. That's, that's sending the dollar lower. But on the other hand, they're, they're getting a bit more aggressive about the balance sheet. So if Q, uh, quantitative tightening, if you like, is, is coming on board, that's a negative for gold. So gold broke through its previous low on the daily chart. And I think probably that is indicative of the fact that we're not going to really get massively beyond 1300 anytime soon. Thank you, Jasper. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Twitter and Facebook.